راستی ساکنان اشرف و همه مدافعان آنها چه میخواهند؟ علاوه بر مردود چناختن ضرب العجله جنایت آمیز دولت عراق آن اصول غیر قابل اقمازی که مینیموم حفاظت ساکنان اشرف را تأمین می کند کدام است؟ نخستین که اصل اساسی حفظ جان و امنیت ساکنان اشرف است در هر طرحی باید حفاظت ساکنان اشرف با تضمین های قابل قبول از جانب ملل متحد و آمریکا و اتحادیه اروپا از جمله با نیروهای کلاهابی ملل متحد یا نیروهای آمریکایی و اتحادیه اروپا تأمین شود دوم اینکه مجاهدین هیچ نیروی مسلح عراقی را در داخل کمپ خود نمیپذیرند مخصوصا برای امنیت و آرامش هزار زن ساکن اشرف زیرا تا به حال دو بار آنها را قتل عام کرده اند و تهدید به انواع و اقسام شکنجه و اعمال ایزایی نیروهای عراقی نباید هیچ مداخله ای در زندگی شخصی آنها در خلال انتقال به کشورهای سالس به عمل آورند سوم اینکه مطابق تصریحات گزارش دبیر کل ملل متحد به شورای امنیت هر راه حلی برای اشرف باید با توافق هر دو طرف یعنی ساکنان اشرف و دولت عراق باشد و چهارم محاصره و همه اقدامات محدود کننده و تهدید کننده از جمله کلی احکام و درخواست های دستگیری و استرداد باید لغو شود ما پیوسته بر مسئولیت آمریکا در بحران اشرف تکید می کنیم و از ایالات متحده می خواهیم که بر طبق قوانین بین المللی حفاظت ساکنان اشرف را تأمین و تصمیم کنند آنها می خواهیم از جابجایی اجباری ساکنان بی دفاع اشرف نیز جلوگیری کنند زیرا که این هم در مسئولیت و هم در توان دولت آمریکاست. و باید تأکید کنم که به خصوص بعد از سفر مالکی به آمریکا هر جنایتی که دولت عراق در حق ساکنان اشرف به عمل آورد آمریکا به طور مضاعف در آن سهیم خواهد بود Yet at the same time we see the government of Iran increasingly becoming more hostile to the international community saying they're going to build nuclear weapons at all costs storming the British embassy pressuring the Iraqi government to go into Camp Ashraf we see the massacres at Camp Ashraf that have taken place and you saw those pictures we see an Iranian government laughing at the international community that says let's try to work out arrangements to reduce your nuclear stockpile and so you see this growing hostility you see this country also manipulating hostages American hostages foreign hostages for political gain most recently an American hostage in a video yesterday at the same time we look at the situation at Camp Ashraf and things have not gotten better in the last six months in fact right now this is the most important human rights issue I believe affecting the international community because in 21 days those at Camp Ashraf may be relocated and we must prevent that relocation we must stand behind them the special representative of the secretary general has said just on tuesday that the human rights commission must complete its processing 
to ensure and give time for resettlement of Ashraf residents into third countries. The government of Iraq, however, remains defiant. And my hope is that my president, President Obama, who meets Prime Minister Maliki in Washington next week, will be strong. And I believe he will be strong. It's the United Nations. It's a European unity to stand up for responsibilities to save the lives of 3,400 Iranian dissidents and use their power to prevent this dislocation. So the honor and the values of the international community are at stake. We must warn the Iraqi government not to use violence and remind that government of their international obligations. We have to remove that deadline. We have to recognize the rights of those residents. We must abandon the idea of internal relocation. We have to say to that government, you must cooperate with the international community, with the United Nations. In his memoirs, former President Bill Clinton recounts in painful detail his deep remorse at standing by and doing nothing. With a few thousand troops and help from our allies, we could have saved lives. The failure to try to stop Rwanda's tragedies became one of the greatest regrets of my presidency. How ironic that President Clinton's wife is now the Secretary of State and has the power to remedy the injustice and pending catastrophe at Camp Ashraf. No one is asking Secretary of State Clinton to send troops or to, help, or to enlist the help of our European allies. All she has to do is delist the MEK and ensure that the residents are given safe passage out of Iraq. Will she take this decision? And will she take it in the next few weeks before it's too late? Or in a few years' time, will she join with her husband and express remorse at what could have been? Will we be reading a similar passage in her memoirs about how the failure to stop the final assault on Camp Ashraf was one of her greatest regrets during her stewardship of American foreign policy. As we all know, time is short and the need for action is urgent. So what can we do now? We can continue to pressure Prime Minister Maliki to delay closing the camp and allow the UNHCR to do its work. The UNHCR must be allowed to start the process of registering, identifying, and interviewing the residents. The U.S. and the European Union have ways to influence his decision-making. And we know that he can be influenced. We know that he is sensitive to negative publicity by his claiming in an article in the Washington Post this past week that he is seeking a so-called peaceful solution to Camp Ashraf. When he comes to Washington next week, President Obama must tell him to keep the camp open and allow the UNHCR to do their work. As we all know, the United States has a special responsibility to protect the residents at Camp Ashraf. This responsibility doesn't end on December 31st. It doesn't end when the last American soldier leaves Iraq. It ends only when all the residents of the camp are safe and secure and allowed to live their lives in peace and in dignity. The fastest, the easiest, the best way to accomplish this goal is to delist the MEK immediately. Thank you very much.